this is for the guys and like we struggle with this every single day when a girl's at a gym and she's working out <laughs> no <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to the It's Simple Podcast. Thanks. It's your boys, Ohave. We got Mr. Turtle, Matty C. <laughs> and we got, we got Stefano in the building. And we got a very special guest today. She goes by the name of Janessa, Jessica Vanessa, put together. Love it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> it's a pleasure having you here today. Thanks for having me. Uh, I think we were, like, chatting over Instagram regarding this. And, uh, you know, what you've been doing is pretty cool. Um, you have two businesses that you run. You started your your fitness business before covid and covid happened and we talked about it a little bit before but uh it'll be a good like insightful conversation because it's just you know you're a woman you're killing it in your, your respective field and we want to showcase more of that right and it's you know thank you for coming on thanks for coming that uh, a lot let's get a little bit about you let's learn a little bit about you you're from sarnia or as matt says narnia yes not my first <laughs> time hearing that one <laughs> have you seen the lion there I am the lion there. Oh, oh I like oh, that. Oh, shit. <laughs> Matt, oh, shit. Matt has the best dad jokes ever. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I Narnia. love a good dad joke. Yeah, yeah here and there. Yeah. Or all the time. Matt, <laughs> Matt is this a sign or something? Are you a dad? Are you ready to be a dad? Possible. <laughs> <laughs> I have a big announcement to make. <laughs> Live on the pod. I have a cat. That's oh, awesome. Oh, shit. I've yeah. seen your cats. They're pretty cute. Right? I'm a cat lady. Are you? I love cats. How do you, how do you You're get my people. So thank you for watching. <laughs> 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 It's been a pleasure. Let's talk about cats this whole episode. Okay, actually. I can do that. A lot of different breeds. People might not. People think about cats. I got a quick cat. question about cats. How do you get on their vibe, their frequency? Because sometimes I feel like they're about to attack me and stab me in the neck. So you gotta be, you know, you gotta, you gotta use those noises a lot. You know, they, they respond well to that noise. No, but like, how do you have fun also, with them? Oh, sorry, how do you have fun feed with the them? Cat? My well, cat my, plays fetch. Yeah, my cat plays fetch too. Okay, listen, there's a difference go. between throwing a little notepad and the cat getting it to you. And being out in a field and throwing a ball and watching the dog run 100 miles an hour like you This is Bolt, true, brother. This is true. You know, this run towards true. that ball, pick that ball up. I feel like not a cat come will, back, run around. I feel like 20 a cat minutes will, later, show up. I feel like a cat will betray you. I don't know. Tell me if I'm wrong. My cat, know. my cat has hardcore separation anxiety. I'm his guy. He's my guy. Even if I just go in the washroom and shut the door, he starts freaking out. They are little hunters, though, eh? Oh yeah. Don't fuck with them. They bring, yeah. That's what they bring. But he he is beside me at all times. Doesn't matter where I am, he has to be elevated though. Why do you love cats? Because they're a lot more low maintenance than dogs. Like I would love to have a dog, but it wouldn't be fair. I genuinely don't have time. That's the thing, you're a realtor. You don't have time for a dog. Mm -hmm. You can literally feed your cat in the morning, leave them for the entire day, come back at midnight and like they're good. Yeah. Dog true. won't let you do that. But dog will like go to the bathroom all over the place and tear the couch apart. Yeah, they get pissed off. <laughs> but it's like, isn't that fucked up? You leave the cat alone by itself. They're happy, they're content, they're very independent. Do you guys speak cat? No, that's the real question. Yeah. You have some pets. Yeah. <laughs> My cat yeah. fully understands me. If you, and then the trick is if you just like use one eye from a corner and you look at it, it'll automatically go into play mode. It's true. As soon as you stare at it, one eye only, play mode instantly. And then when they like you, they go put a bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. They'll That's do it because it looks, it looks like you're about to attack them and they'll attack you back in a fun like, way. It's fun. Do you like close one eye or do you just put? No, no, around the corner. Like you peer on the corner oh, with okay. one eye and then they're like, oh my God. <laughs> instantly like, they're ready. Yeah. It's fun. It's a good time. All right. Aside from cats, yeah. where okay. were we? Sorry. No, yeah. You, you <laughs> said you're from Sarnia. Sarnia. Yeah. Sarnia. I want to know about, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, right? What did you do when you were younger? What type of TV do you watch? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, I guess I'll start when I was younger. Like I grew up in Sarnia. We did live in British Columbia for a bit when I was really oh, young. Nice. Uh, when I was a kid kid. But when I started, I guess, um, coming into like becoming who I am, I was in Sarnia for most of my childhood, my teenage years. I went to high school there. I went to college there. I played sports there. Um, I was very, very heavy into sports. And uh, my dad is a pretty intense athlete. He plays like everything. So I always really looked up to him. And I think that's where 
my life started was with sports like mm -hmm. literally everything i do has stemmed from that so it was a big part of my life and my identity and i used to go watch him play basketball games and then he put me into a basketball league and he was my basketball coach for a bit and then i got into all these other sports i did track and field i did wrestling how was it having school. how was it having your dad like like at the same time like do you have any brothers or sisters i have an older sister older sister mm -hmm. So you have no brothers? No. Nope. So your dad probably got the enjoyment of like that, that like male influence. Male, you know, like the, how the, like the son and the father thing where they put puts the son into sports, all this mm -hmm. stuff. So he got that maybe out of you. But was he ever like like hard on you, like in the uh, training practice and stuff? Like yes and no. Like it's funny you say that because he always said I was a son he never had. Like mm -hmm. I'm very much a tomboy, yeah. and he's always said that even still to this day. But he was hard on me not you hear you hear a lot of parents where they're like living vicariously through the kid and they're yeah. like pressuring them to do all this stuff but it was never like that like he wanted to see me do well and but he also supported every decision i made like anything i want to do it was always my decision and if i wanted to do that then he would fully support it and push me like when i was 13 i would say that i wanted to um go to the olympics for track and field that never happened but he would say like you know what you'll do it and and anything you put your mind to you'll do and then he hired me a trainer that specialized in track and field and so he always wanted to see my dreams come true and support me and do whatever he could to make that happen mm -hmm. i feel like sports okay. are such a good foundation mm -hmm. and i think that that's a testament to what you're saying so far a, I, a lot of people um can relate to that as well you know the sports give you the foundation to like find you learn a lot about yourself in life and then also like it takes you throughout your career path too which i'm sure it's it's done for you right yeah like that's how you learn discipline that's how you learn hard work literally everything i've ever done in my life i can tie it back to yeah. being an athlete and playing sports and also teamwork working with other people as well as being independent because i did a lot of team sports but i also did a lot of individual sports like track and field and wrestling at the yep. end of the day like if you lose or you make a mistake like it's all on you and you can't rely on other people so i like that i had a mix of both team and individual sports mm -hmm. i was never a sports guy i was never like good at any sports like i would try out for all the sports and i would never make them i was just like i'm not like physically good you know mm -hmm. like i remember track and field was one thing i fucking hated <laughs> like when that 100 meter shit would start i was like buddy i'm not running <laughs> there's no fucking chance <laughs> oh, and these guys are just like the beasts you know running back 400 meters no fucking chance <laughs> 20 meters in i'm like buddy i'm throwing it in the towel mm -hmm. you know call the medic call well, the medic do, i like track and field <laughs> yeah i love it like yeah. i feel like it's such a metaphor for life especially if you do short distance like sprints for example like the 200 meter and the 100 meter i did so i did those two i did long jump i did relay and then sometimes i did the 400 when my coach would make me which i hated it but i i would do it anyway but i feel like the short distances it's very metaphorical because for example a 100 meter you only have like 10 to 15 seconds to make it happen and as soon as you come out of the blocks you make one mistake there's literally zero room for a mistake longer distances you can make a few mistakes you have time to make up for it in a 100 meter and 200 meter like you literally have to be perfect and everything has to be on point or you're done mm -hmm. that's very relatable to life so then when you played all those sports then what, how did that what happened from there um, so I played all those sports. I had, when my dad hired um, the trainer for me, mm -hmm. he kind of became a role model to me as well. And I have my cousin who's also in the fitness industry pretty heavily and he's been very successful with it. And that kind of showed me where I wanted to take my life after because I remember my trainer, his name was Ezron. He told me um, one day, he's like, if I could just do this for free for everyone, I would if I didn't have to put food on my plate because this right. is just what I love doing. And I remember the day he said that, I was like, probably 16 years old maybe younger and i was like this is what i want to do when i grow up like that i want to help people i want to be a trainer i want to be a coach and um that's pretty much the moment that i knew that's mm. what i want to do mm. that's, and, yeah. there's, a lot, there's a lot of value in that too right because you took that inspiration from him and then now you're paying it forward exactly i was like i want to pass this on to other people myself and then like i got into fitness pretty young i started training people i think it was like 18 or 19 i would do it for like 20 dollars, which is hilarious now yeah. <laughs> I would just take you gotta whoever. start you gotta start, yeah. There, yeah, you gotta start somewhere i would take them to the track i would bring like fitness equipment with me in my trunk i remember we would go to this hockey arena and they had all the stairs i would make people run stairs and then we would do some like strength stuff after but yeah i would do it for like free or like 20 dollars cash and then it kind of just grew from there and then I went to school for something in that industry um, and then I kind of learned like the business side of it too and that's something that I grew a passion for as well like I love the business yeah. side see like that, that's a cool thing because a lot of people don't do that so they, they'll go toward go in the path of being an athlete wanting to be an athlete 
uh, either it's track and fields, uh, you know, major sports, whatever it may be. But then if you don't end up doing that, they just let go of that and they start to pursue another job that they hate their whole, they hate their life after, right? But you still took that and you went into an industry that using that experience, using that fitness knowledge, all, all that you learned when you were younger, and it's fun for you, right? You turn mm -hmm. that into a business now, right? Mm -hmm. Which is the perfect like combination one can have. Like yeah. you love training, you love all the sports. Now you're incorporating that whole personal training and we'll get into the gym that you opened up, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about uh, the transition into, it's called O2 Fuel. Yeah, O2 Fuel yeah. Fitness, yeah. So um, I guess, so after I was done school, I moved away for a little bit. I moved to Dominican Republic. I wanted to like clear my head because I thought, so I went to college and I thought maybe I would move on to university yeah. after, but I wasn't 100% sure. So I decided, let me just go away and clear my head for a bit. And I know when I travel, like I get these life epiphanies. So while I was away, I had an epiphany that I was like, you know what, university is not for me. Like I don't need a degree. I have all the connections, I have the experience and I'm not gonna waste another three, four years when I could just be like throwing myself into the world. How old were you when you? Uh Mm, when I moved away, I was 20, I believe. You were young, eh? Yeah, by, I was by really yourself, young. On your own? Yeah, I moved there by myself. I was there for like two years. Wow. How did your parents take that? Um, they missed me and they were happy for me, but like they know. I've always been the kind of person, even as a kid, where it's like, you can tell me what you think I should or shouldn't do, but I literally don't listen to anyone. Yeah. I just always do what I want. That's, that's the way you should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I don't listen to anyone. So I know my dad was sad, but he was also like, you know, I wish I did that when I was younger. And it's hard for him to see like, I'm like his baby and I'm going into a third world country by myself to just see what happens. And so obviously he was worried and he got teary eyed when I left. But when he saw what I did there, like he was so proud. So. How long were you there for? Two, Two years. years. Yeah. Two years and then, so what did you do while you were there? Um, so when I was there, I started, uh, well, first I just bought a one-way flight and I had no idea I was gonna live there. Like that wasn't nice. the plan. I just said like, Love I'm that. gonna get a one-way flight. I saved up as much money as I could. I was working at Good Life Fitness beforehand and um, just saved like all my money. I was bartending, saved all my tips. And I was like, I'm gonna save as much as I can so I can stay as long as I feel makes sense. Yeah. And I was thinking like, oh, maybe six weeks, maybe three months, like max. And then I got there and I just fell in love with it. So I decided to stay. And when I first got there, um, I went to this this bar lounge on the beach and I ended up talking to the owner and I was like, you know, I think like I, I wanna stay here. I was like, but I need to start working and I need to learn the language a little mm -hmm. better. So he was like, here, I'll hire you. And he hired me like under the table cause there yeah. I obviously didn't have a visa or anything. And I started working there for literally $5 a day. And then when wow. I learned the language, um, I quit the job after about two months. I, I learned enough of the language from working there. I quit and then I was like, I want to start making my own money, not $5 yeah, a day. Right. And so I started marketing on Instagram, just saying that I was running these fitness vacations. And like, I literally just winged it. I was like, how can I make money? I'm like, you know what, this is what I'm good at. So I would post on Instagram, my workouts on the beach and like drinking my protein shake at the beach. And I would say like, who wants to come train with me in the Dominican Republic? Like you could go to the all-inclusive resort and get shit faced every day and gain a bunch of weight at the buffet and come home feeling like garbage, which is what most people do when they go on vacation or yeah or you can come to me and you're gonna come home probably 10 pounds lighter learning how to cook healthy food and so i would do fitness retreats and i trained a bunch of athletes there too like professional surfers kiteboarders mm, um nice. that kind of thing and that's, then i like, stayed sorry, for two years sorry to cut you off that's such a fucking smart concept yeah it is mac can really like, you love the retreats i love retreats yeah. you do mm -hmm. yeah they're they're good time yeah that's it's awesome. very lucrative if you do it the right way as well like i do want to start doing that again soon but like now so because i did that back then and i didn't have a ton of business knowledge that was just me winging it had no idea how to do a lot of like the marketing stuff and i learned a lot and i was able to do enough to like get by but it was so hit or miss like one month i would make three hundred dollars next month i would make three thousand dollars and then i would make nothing for three months so it was right. very like inconsistent so that's kind of when I decided that I needed to do something else that was more consistent for my future. But now that I have all this business knowledge from the businesses I have here in Canada, like I do want to get into retreats and stuff again. And this time it would be like on another level. You were yes. 20 years old when you started the retreat stuff? Yeah. It's impressive. impressive. That's I impressive. was getting, I was getting drunk at twenty. Yeah, hey, I, was get, I was still getting drunk, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, no, but that's like it's a good mindset yeah. for that age, right? Retreats are hot right now too. Mm -hmm. Like you'll be hit, you're hitting it at a really good time. Like the popularity is growing. Mm. People are yearning for experience, right? Look at look at look at how much and they'll pay. Yeah, and they'll pay for it. Look how mm -hmm. much you learned from that experience. You went there, you learned a whole other fucking language, mm -hmm. which is impressive. And then built those business, started to develop those entrepreneurial skills. If you didn't go, 
you wouldn't have that right yeah that was probably the most pivotal two years of my life like i learned so much more there than i did in school like i was in school for two three years and i learned nothing compared to what i learned just throwing myself into another country i i can uh, attest to that because i did the same thing like i went to albania and i threw myself there i was like you know what i'm gonna move my business operation like, open an office there and etc and it's same thing everyone's like this is not smart this is not smart you shouldn't do this shouldn't do this mm. but it's like sometimes you gotta go with like your gut feeling right and you gotta try these different experiences i tell everyone like when you go somewhere else and you live there for a bit and you start to see the culture the people you start to it's something different right so like you start to fall in love with it and you want to stay there even more and more and more because we grew up in this environment our whole life so we're so used to Big it time so when we go to something different I feel like we everyone should do that in their lifetime. They should go live somewhere for at least like a year, two years, somewhere else where it's totally different than where they're currently living, just to get a different percept, uh, perception of life, right? And as you said, like it refreshes your mind. You learn so much about yourself and you get crazy new ideas, which then you can bring back and then, you know, kill it. Yeah, you're, I feel like that's what yeah. the 20s are. 20s are good for that, right? Trying things. Yep. Moving places, experiencing things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, their 30s is yeah. implementing. Yeah. Actually, mm -hmm. but like even like I feel like in the twenties, like our whole like the structure how everything's been built out is doesn't allow that, right? It's like we're told to go to school, call university or college from then there, masters, then masters, then yeah. you get into like your program, then you're starting off as like a entry level position, and you work your way up, and then. Do you guys 60, think it's changing? Do you, you think it's changing? One, one oh, yeah. million percent. One so much. I wouldn't like people drop off resumes to my business and they'll have a degree on there or diplomas and like on paper it can look like oh you're the most educated person ever but like i'm not impressed by that at mm -hmm. all like i'm like okay if you if i have 20 resumes when i put out a, a job ad and all you know there's 15 resumes that have a degree and a diploma and this certification and that like i'm not impressed because all 15 or 20 of you have the same thing how does that stand out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i mean unless you're going to be obviously like a nurse or a doctor like i understand you have to go to school for certain things but yeah, yeah you know, certain you know professions what I, you know what i do when i like post jobs this is pretty cool nobody's still my tactics they all watch <laughs> dropping gems um, so mm -hmm. in my job post whatever i post on wherever social media etc if there's if it's like a job platform i'll at the bottom of it at the bottom of the whole thing i'll make a note and i'll be like please do not email me a resume or anything if you're interested come show up to the office from this time to this time here's the office address and that's it so then you want to see them when, when people call no when people call and they're like yeah i seen your job posting i'm like i'm not interested or when people reply to the ad i'm not interested because i'm like if someone was smart and they really want that job they'll read the full post properly and then at the bottom they'll see this is how you get the job you have to come to the office and when people and I've hired people that came to the office because I'm like, you just did your job. You mm. read the post, you came. I don't care about your resume. I don't care about your past experience. Of course, in certain roles, yeah. But I want to see how you are as a person. I want right. to see, can you talk? Can you communicate? How's your body language? Are you energetic? Are you like, if you're really shy, but like, you know, some stuff may not work out. So like, I feel like the whole resume aspect is such bullshit. And as we were younger, we were t told that resumes are so important. And they have classes and courses on sitting down and polishing and making the perfect resume. And then when you go do the job, they have no like, social skills or speaking yeah. skills or anything, right? Is that, is that like something you look for when you're hiring? Like, what do you look for? Personality is everything. Like we always say, it's better to hire on personality and teach the rest. Cause I can teach you the skills. Exactly. I can teach you like how I want you to be as a trainer, as a coach or whatever the position is. But like, I can't teach you how to have a good personality. Mm -hmm. never, never. To stay hungry, motivated, good vibe. Like, you know, the ability to communicate. These are all skills that are overlooked but i agree i think it's changing now yeah character is everything and like it's funny you guys bring this up because so before i opened the gym and before i moved away to the dr actually as soon as i was um in my last semester of school i applied for what i thought was like my dream job and at the time it was and it was mm -hmm. basically with the company that i'm with now because i don't own the company i just own this location but um I wanted to go in there and apply for the job to be a conditioning coach and so I go in there they actually invited me in for the interview and I was stoked I was like this is my dream job it's finally happening and I had the interview and uh, they didn't hire me they rejected me and they're like you're too green you just get out of school like you need a little bit more life experience so me I'm very competitive and like I take things very um, 
to heart i guess yeah. i'm very hard on myself so i was like hey screw these guys they have no idea like i'm gonna show them i'm gonna prove them and get this life experience and then that's when i moved to the dr and i started training there and doing all my fitness vacations and training athletes and they saw that because i was posting on social media all the time so about a year and a half later one of the owners of the company messaged me and was like holy smokes like we told you to go get life experience like we didn't think you're gonna buy a one-way flight and go and go off like this <laughs> so then he wanted to figure out more about what I was doing. And then they're the ones who like reached out to me and said, you know, you should come back to Canada and talk with us again because we have an opportunity for you. So these are the same guys who rejected me before from just, just hiring me. And I come back to Canada, we talk, and now they're asking me to be their partner and open a gym with them. I'm like, it's funny how the world works because at first, like my resume wasn't impressive because I, okay, I went to school and I trained some people. But then when they saw, now I'm adding to my resume that I moved to this country and I just figured it out and I started my own business, that was impressive. Right. like how many other people have applied to the job with a degree or with a diploma but now they have this they're like that's what stood out to us because that was ballsy mm -hmm. anybody that starts their own business is already like 10 steps ahead of anybody yeah. else takes that, courage you know, like I, uh, where was i i was at my accountant yes like on thursday and i was talking to him and i was he was like listen like, and this is the reason why i, I, I started using him because he's like i'm an accountant but i'm an accountant that owns businesses so I know like what I need to do. Like I understand the business side of it as well. I know I want to save taxes, et cetera, et cetera, how to move stuff around, whatever it may be. But he has that knowledge and that experience of operating his own business and he's an accountant. So that's the perfect combination, right? Where if you were just to hire an accountant that went to school, got out of school, got a job, that's it. And is an accountant, he has no experience of that business side, right? So you've like you sort of groomed yourself to be like how, how do i say this like the perfect uh like the fitness person right in a sense where it's like you have that experience plus you have the experience of you know uh of opening your own business that you, you did in the dr and now you're coming back and now you're going to open a franchise right or take a franchise open another location so someone that has that full experience is by far more impressive than someone that just wants to be like a fitness trainer right? yeah it's so funny because like if that makes sense no mm -hmm. that makes sense you you're good yeah. <laughs> words are hard yeah. it's okay <laughs> no it, it's funny because it, exactly like uh, they didn't even want me to be an employee at first and then now you're asking me to partner with you and open up a business and be a business owner with you like and just because of the simple fact that it was only about a year and a half from when they rejected me to when they were asking me to partner with them so i mean in that time frame like I just wanted to get as much experience as I could and learn as much as I could. And mm -hmm. that's really what stands out to people, um, not not the degrees and the diplomas. Yeah. How's it been now since, like since you guys now have partnered? It's been good. So we um, opened our location in Vaughan in 2018. So Where about in Vaughan? Um, Highway 7 in Weston, right behind oh, the new okay. Tesla building. Yeah. Oh, oh nice. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like it's perfect location. Um, but yeah, so we opened 2018. We were open for about a year and like three or four months and then COVID hit right after that. Uh, so we crushed it our first year, like more than we could imagine. So, I mean, the concept is there and it's proven to work, but then COVID Tell us a little bit about, uh, you mentioned earlier when we were talking outside about what exactly you do at that gym. So tell us a little bit about it, right? Um, so basically our style of training is like if you think of athletic conditioning, but for everyday adults So if you were to go to like a soccer or a football combine camp to do the conditioning for that or a basketball camp Our training style is very similar We have a lot of like the cardio conditioning with the agility ladders and the hurdles and stuff But we really focus on the strength compulsion too, mm -hmm. like compulsion component Com com it works. Yeah. It's fine. It works, it works today. It works. <laughs> Something to see. We're all there. We're all there with yeah. you. Don't worry. Um, and then we focus on like full body strength training and we're not like a regular gym. We don't have all the machines and stuff, but we have a ton of squat racks. We have the Olympic bars, dumbbells, TRX. And so, yeah, we literally train people like athletes. Um, and that's from, you have your everyday moms. We have a ton of realtors that are there, just people from all walks of life. I love that. Matt, why aren't you training if other realtors are training? Yeah. Now that I heard that, I'm there. It's like competitive. <laughs> We're training. Gotta do. That's the easiest way to convince a realtor. Yep. Tell them another other realtor realtors to do there, something. That's it. They're on board. Yeah, they're good. Watch me. <laughs> that, that's interesting. What's your approach to training? Because you know, so I can imagine it's tough to train people sometimes because you can't control what they do, <clears> if they <throat> pay attention or if they stick with it. So like, do you have like an approach or like method that you, 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 you kind of like take to 
your perspective of training? Yeah, well, for me, I always say I'm kind of like a tough love trainer. That's what I like to say. Nice, nice. I mean, I want to help people who want to help their self. So like if someone comes in and they don't want to put in the work and like I can be the best trainer in the world, but if you don't want to put in the work and you don't want to apply like the things that I'm giving you, then I can't really help you. So Ooh. I'm big on that. If someone doesn't want to be there, then I don't want to spend my time and energy on them but when i have someone come in who's a hard worker they're hungry for the results they're hungry to get in shape or whatever their goal is like that energizes me and that fires me up and i'm like if you come in and you're that person i will do literally everything it takes to help you but if you come in and i can tell you're not really into it like why should i be into it yeah that's the tough part about it now you you mentioned covid what was that experience like going through covid with with the with the fitness center and stuff traumatic yeah i can imagine (laughs) yeah that was really really hard honestly like the last few years um, the two years of COVID closing us, opening us, closing, opening, we were never fully open. Like or we were never allowed to be open. Um, even when they said, okay, you can open your doors. There's always some sort of restriction on us and the restrictions never made sense. It was like, okay, every gym has to have no more than 10 people in the building, including staff. And it didn't matter what size your gym was. So I was like, okay, you have little gyms like F45s and Orange Theories that are like a shoebox, mm-hmm. And okay, so they're allowed to have 10 people in there, but then we have 7,000 square feet and still we can only have 10 people, it doesn't really make sense. A lot of it didn't make sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the stuff, because people depended on working out. I know probably a lot of us can relate to that as well. You as well, like we depended a lot of it just for like the sanity of your mental health, right? And it was taken away from us, right? Yeah, like at the beginning, when we first closed in March, 2020, I was concerned because like so many of our clients were seeing a lot of physical results and they were on a roll. And I was like, oh, I don't want them to regress. And then like, we got to catch up. And it was hard to keep them um, accountable and motivated during that time because they really wanted the energy of the other people in the Mm -hmm. building and the trainer standing right there and the different environment where you're not with your your kids and your husband are not distracting you or your wife's not distracting you. And like, you need to have that 45 minutes for yourself outside of your home, outside of work. And so when we took that away from people, I mean, at first, it was oh no like they're gonna they're gonna regress physically but then after time went on and we were still closed months later i was like damn these people their mental health that's all i cared about at that point because people were messaging me every day saying like i'm going crazy like i'm getting depressed and that was the hardest thing was knowing that i couldn't help people to feel happy and healthy so how did you pivot so we did some online stuff um we did online training we did like pre-recorded workout videos that people could purchase we did like the zoom trainings we would do like facebook and instagram lives you could follow along um during the warmer months we did some outdoor training but like as much as we pivoted and did all that like at the end of the day i'm never gonna pretend like that's the same thing like of course it's not even close i can't i hate uh, like working out at home Mm-hmm. Just based off like those videos, if you watch a YouTube video, try to like replicate. That, I hated yeah. it too. I didn't like it. There's no, it's not fun it. at all. You want to be in that environment of like a gym, right? Yeah. And it's like for some people, like for myself, it's like that the gym is like my time. It's like when I get away from all the headaches, all the bullshit in life, whatever may be going on. When I get to the gym, it's like I put my headphones on and I'm just like in this whole new world for myself, right? And it's like when that was taken away from us. We were all just like, what the fuck's going on? And you notice a lot of people re- resort like, fuck, we're stumbling on words today. <laughs> resort, that's a word. A lot of people shifted, I'm gonna use that word inst- instead, towards like drinking alcohol or abusing drugs and just eating like shit and just like wasting so much of their life and just, eat. I, I, trust me, I did in the beginning, start of COVID, that's all I did. Watching I was like, Netflix, oh, fuck, Netflix, Netflix about, this, that? that, consistently house parties, all that, sorry, no, no house, house parties. parties. No. <laughs> What? Nothing. I was Seriously? by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I, all that stuff. And, and you were missing that fitness side of it, right? Mm-hmm. And then in the beginning, we were all terrified. We thought it was fucking zombie apocalypse outside, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was after, videos of people passing on yeah. the subways and shit in China. Like, what the fuck was that about? <laughs> then like, after when like, shit like, started to make sense, and you start to notice like certain gyms like that started fighting back, right? And shout out to Sky Fitness. Sky Fitness was one of them that sort of kept our sanity going right so did you ever like try to like fight against and be like no no we're gonna do it we're gonna like run this and like try yeah. to stand up there came to a certain point like at the beginning like you said everyone thought it was a zombie apocalypse we had no idea what was going on and like so i was kind of in that zone at first too and then when we started realizing what was really happening um then we started fighting back and like there were times where i mean They had rules. The rules were changing all the time. And like, I would just kind of apply them how I wanted to apply them and how I thought made sense. And at the end of the day, like it's survival mode too. Cause it got to a point where I'm like, 
this is a how we help people to be happy and healthy both physically and mentally so you're telling me that I can't open my business because it's a health risk. No, it's a health risk when people are sitting there getting obese and depressed. Yeah. That's what's a health 100%. risk. And then number two, I'm like, this is how I put food on my plate. This is how I pay my bills. Mm. And this is how like my staff, I'm very close with our team. And this is how they can pay their bills too. And like, I feel a responsibility for them. Like they're working with me and mm -hmm. I want to provide for them as well. So it got to a point where I was like, you know what, we're just going to do things how we want to do things. And you kind of have to weigh the risk and the reward and what is for the greater good of the people. But doesn't it blow your mind how the gyms were considered to be a health risk and they were closed. Because of the like, spreading of the, the spreading of the vi and then like, and like when people were bringing up statistics, I don't know exactly like the exact statistics, but it's like more people die per year from like diabetes, heart attacks, suicides, all these like suicides, depression, all these uh, like the flu, you know, flu. <laughs> the flu, the flu, the flu, the flu, the old one, the old old flu, not the new one, the old one, <laughs> and um, all this stuff, which is and the solution to that, a lot of it is like physical activities, right, like. We had a the the guy on the uh, the brain doctor that talked about how oh, like, yes. if you run every Matt. morning or something like or if you do any you, you should do like forty min or thirty minutes to an hour of like physical activity every single day because like you regrow like your brain cells it's good for your brain and it's like, good for your heart all that yep. all that stuff but that stuff was a no no yeah right? mm -hmm. and it was like nope that's this is a health risk and every all the gyms close them down etc cetera, etc. Cetera. That's not a priority. Yeah. We're going to worry about all this other stuff. Like, and it blows boot, my mind. And to boot, the people who are most susceptible to being, being detrimental were people who are overbeat or, or overweight and obese. obese. So it's like you take away the gym from people like, so they're really put in the corner. You know what I mean? So this, this leads to a good segue. So by being in the fitness industry and like your goal is to get people in shape, give people a better life, you know, that, that's what you're doing necessarily. Make people live longer mm -hmm. by physical activity. How do you deal with like, now like i'll throw some stuff out like uber eats all these food delivery services where eating out is so yeah you can accessible. eat healthy but like eating bad is so accessible all this like like how do you, how do you combat that right like again be, like, try to be healthy at the same time and like seeing how the world is shifting to like all these processed foods and these fast food joints everywhere and like the, yeah, how but there's also the other side too a lot more healthy spots popping up i was yeah, just yeah. gonna say what, that what, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. they are but it's like still like the the, like I would say, like the social, like any, majority of the stuff is all like discipline. You know? What's some yeah. good healthy spots? Seriously, like if I had to go basil somewhere box. and eat something good, yeah, basil box is good. What's yeah. that? Like that's in Toronto, obviously. A lot of good spots in Toronto. There's another one, um, Imperfect Eats or Perfect, something like that. It's good. Really There's a good. lot of meal prep companies these days too. Like, like yeah. literally left and right, you look on Instagram and someone's advertising a meal prep company. Yeah. So there's options. Like at the end of the day, like, okay, I'm a big foodie. Like I love food. And it's funny because I'll post like a pizza or something on the weekend and a cocktail and people are like, what, you eat that? And I'm like, I'm why still not? human at the end of the day. Yeah. That's why I train so hard and why I eat clean 99% of the time so that I can enjoy those things and like not feel guilty about yeah. it and fully enjoy it. And like, to your point, I mean, yes, it's very accessible to get junk food and there's so much processed food out there. And even the way that they create these foods, they're literally designed with ingredients to get you hooked. Like it does something to your brain. Like they say sugar is more addictive than crack cocaine. It's just not as frowned upon. Mm -hmm. So like, yes, it's accessible. But at the end of the day, like I said, I always say I'm a tough love trainer. And realistically, it's all about what your priorities are. If it's a priority to you, you're going to make it happen. And when people say it's hard to eat healthy these days, I think that's like a load of bullshit because it's not hard. You're just not disciplined mm -hmm. because there's like all these healthy spots popping up. Like you said, even if you go to like a fine dining restaurant with your friends on the weekend, uh, fine dining restaurants have so many healthy options. Like I go and I get, you can get like scallops, you can get grilled calamari. They have like these beautiful salads and like grilled chicken. And like, so when people say that eating out and socializing is hard to do and not eat healthy, I mean, that's just because you're making those choices yourself. You're the one that's in control of it. So, now, like, yeah, like cool. to attest, like to counter that. Do you feel guilty? No. You look like you're being called. You know what right it now? is? <laughs> Uber Eats. We went, we went to, oh, He's the king of Uber Eats. It's fucked up. But I try, like, I started Uber Eats and like Impact Kitchen, Basil Box, all that stuff. Really good. It's really good. So, we're at the Jays game yesterday. And uh, they give you like a menu and there's like food options. And there's one healthy option, which was the tuna tataki bowl. So for myself, I was like, yo, listen, I'm at a Jays game. There's no fucking chance I'm eating healthy. I'm going to, I went with, a, we start, me and my boy, we start off with a burger. You have, you get to choose three. So we start off with a burger, then uh, 
I wanted the lobster roll, so I got the lobster roll. He's like, I'm gonna be healthy. He, he got the tuna tataki bowl. He's sitting there. He's like, takes one bite, and he's just like, you know, he's not enjoying it. it tastes horrible, and he's sitting there miserable. But I feel like some places, like, that to like add that to the next part is like some places just need better healthy options, right? Because mm -hmm. like the whole simple concept of like grilled chicken and a salad, you can eat that, but it's like. You, it's so fucking boring. It's boring. You know? It's yeah. such mm -hmm. boring food. So I feel like, <clears throat> like, healthy options just need to be a little more. Like people need to be a more, little more creative. How to make them flavorful? How to make them enjoyable? Because our minds are like, like, like when we start eating all the junk food. Any uh, any time you're hungry, what do you think about? You think about the worst stuff right off the top of your bat. You never think about the healthy option because you're like, oh, whatever it may be. That's me, for, for example. <laughs> but it's like I wish the healthy food was just a little bit better. You get used you know? to it though. You find your own little tricks and tweaks. Your own little, Seasoning your own is little sauces. You know, like me, like I'm a big hot sauce guy. Yeah. The I'll switch it up. Right now I'm on the sriracha tip. You know? <laughs> you have next to try month, my friend's hot Cholulas. sauce. My friend, his name is Chris Chetty. Shout out Chris Chetty. It's called Chetty's Hot Sauce. They make the best hot sauces. They have different flavors. The garlic one is Fuego. That's okay. the best one. Can you order it online? Um, it I'll find out for you. Yeah. He'll probably, you know what? He'll probably send you. I'll get you, I'll get you some. I he's love hot he's sauce. solid. They're Guyanese and like they know their nice. hot sauces. Yeah. Um, and then also I love to put seasonings like Flavor God seasonings. I like Flavor theirs. God's good. And if you go to um, the Pepper Palace, there's one in Vaughn. They have like all these seasonings that are low sodium and they don't have a bunch of garbage in them. Like they're more pricey, but it's worth it. And mm -hmm. like that, I literally like dump the seasonings onto my food. And one thing I also like to do is look at kind of my week ahead to to your point about like the restaurants and yeah, who wants to go to a restaurant and order chicken and salad? I barely ever do that. But if I know I'm going out this weekend with my friends, then I try to eat clean the rest of the week so I can fit that in. And mm -hmm. like the day, mm -hmm. like tonight, if I'm going out for dinner, I'll eat clean all day today to save room for like those extra carbs exactly. and that fat yeah. that I'm having mm -hmm. later on. So I'll cut back a little bit today because I'm going to go all out later. Yeah, fair. So me and you, we went wild yesterday. We did, we but my first time carbs. having pasta in a while and pizza. Yeah, we we was Locale, good. Locale, yeah, yeah good we went good. We went. We were tra we trained before at Core Fitness. Shout out to Core Fitness, and then uh, and then we went over to Locale and just ate a lot of carbs. Yeah, I love that place. Big yeah, carbs. Good. So good. The pasta was good though. Yeah, eh? it was great. I love What's it. your go-to cheat meal? Pizza. Okay, I never used to like Italian style pizzas until I moved to Vaughn. And then because I probably never had a good one, so now I'm addicted to pizzas with the burrata cheese oh, and nice. like the spicy nice. oil. I love that. Oil, yes. I also love nachos. I make some bomb nachos. Nice. Like no restaurant really? can be my nachos. Um, and then what else? I'm not a big sweet tooth person. For me, it's like the savory stuff, the salty like chips and dip, that kind of mm -hmm, thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I love pizza, man. Burgers, I love it. Man. Just like, you like dirty uh, burgers, eh? Just, no, it's proper smash burgers. That's yeah, like, yeah. Fuck. This is a great <laughs> debate. Maybe we should bring that in. What's the best burger spot? Oh, come on. Didn't you guys have this debate yeah, before? We have. <laughs> what did people say last time? Let's piggyback off that. Yeah, so people were saying Burger Drop. Burger and Drop? How about Burger Happy Drop. Burger? It's now on Uber Eats. It's been on Uber Eats for the longest fucking time. Okay. <laughs> but these burger spots, my recommendation, like anytime you want to try some good food, you have to go to the restaurant. Yes. Get it fresh. No yes. Uber Eats. No, don't, don't do not Uber Eats anything and make a decision on what's good or what's bad because go there. the flavor is not going to be there, right? gonna be a tough one i just knew harvey's i told you guys that was the only burger spot i do i never know these little places over here by that like what's <laughs> what's your favorite burger spot honestly i'm not a big burger person actually you know what artigianale in in yeah, Woodbridge, their burger it's like it's like a big mac on steroids but like luxury edition okay <laughs> so let me good. introduce you to the world of burgers <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm in i'm down so, i'm always down to try food there's like your average burgers like which are like there's like your shitty burger places, which, which is like McDonald's, okay. right? Mm -hmm. And well, then you have Wendy's, which is a little better. So I like Wendy's. You start with McDonald's, then you go to like Wendy's, then you have like Harvey's, A lot of people would disagree &W, with that already. Whatever, whatever it is. Those yeah. are, they're all the same fucking shit. Right? Wendy's, <laughs> like Wendy's, Harvey's, all that stuff. Then you want to elevate your taste buds. You can try all these restaurants, the gourmet burgers or whatever. But if you want the real deal and you want to just have your mouth blown away with flavor, then you got to go try smash burgers smash burgers are 100 percent better than a regular fat thick patty what's the difference because smash burger they're, they're taking the patty they're smashing it down so it gets nice crispy so the flavor is there right with the other patties just, the meat is so thick that sometimes the rest of the burger just disappears right you're just eating the meat eating the meat and sometimes not cooked properly the smash patty the burger's mint right so you got to get a smash burger okay and now 
we had this debate before and I was like, you know, I said happy burgers number one and I gave burger drop number two and then I gave Rudy's number three. But there's a new addition to this <laughs> list and I had it recently and it's called Cubano's Burgers. Cubano's, the spot's called Cubano's. And they have a Cubano burger. It's a smash, bur smash burger. It's phenomenal. Mm. So it's like the top three right now are fighting. So if anybody wants to win the top, you gotta just you know give me a like lifetime supply of burgers and maybe you know what's the top three right now? Burger drop. Yeah. Happy burger. No, I would say top two are those two, and then Cubano's right there. Okay. Where it's are like, these? They're like all touching. Toronto. They're all Toronto. Yeah. And then Rudy's is good. Rudy's is incredible. Rudy's is good. But Rudy's doesn't put pickles on their burgers. And mm. to have a perfect oh, burger, you need pickles. Yeah, right? people who don't like pickles are weird. Yeah, I want, right? I want, I want a burger now. I, I literally buy all. I want buy a dirty thing. burger. These sound like bougie burgers. Like no, but these are like the like go to like it's like, like the when you go to the sh uh, shop, there's no seating or anything, or maybe like two three chairs. It's like a hole in a wall type place. So like it has that fresh like nice taste to it. Do they it's have not doors? Like, huh? They have doors. No, no, you just, no. Yeah. just a hole. Just, just a hole no. in the wall. Interesting. Those Where are the best the places window? sometimes, yeah. like for food, especially. It can look like garbage on the outside, but if you know those spots, those are the best sometimes. And like, I love healthy food. I'm telling you, I try to eat healthy like when I can, but like some stuff, just keep it away from the health. Like pizza, healthy, no. Burger, healthy, no. You know. You can make healthy variations for burgers, sure, but it's like, like the some stuff don't ruin it. No, just have it. If you're going to have yeah. it, just have it. Like yeah. one of my friends, his name is Daniel. He has a yeah. podcast as well. Yeah. He was saying like, if I'm going to have a cookie, like get your protein cookie out of here. Like I just want to have a cookie. Yeah. Like just have the cookie. It doesn't mean that you're eating cookies all day, but yeah. like if you're eating healthy majority of the time, 80, 90% of the time, yeah. and like you want a cookie, have the freaking cookie. Just have a normal cookie. Have a normal pizza. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing about like why we train hard. Like you train hard because you want to enjoy too. Like some people go like completely the other way. It's like I only eat healthy. That's it. And they're bringing like I don't fucking know what they're, they're, they're meal prepping at the beginning of the week. I, I, to eat, just do what you got to do. You but I, I'm the same way. Huh? <laughs> tripping? Is that what you do, <laughs> buddy? I've always been my container. If that's what you want to do, do chicken two days old. <laughs> yeah, at least really? three. If that's oh. realtor life, like my dad's mm -hmm. a realtor, and if if it's not like prepped ahead of time, or my mom doesn't make it, like he will either not eat at all, or he will just go to like McDonald's because your schedule's like changing all, all over the time. The place, yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, like, I want you got to enjoy it too. That's mm -hmm. the point, you know. Like, if you go, the weekend comes around, you want to have that pizza, you want to have that cookie. Shout out to Subway cookies, by the way, they're phenomenal. You want to have that cookie. <laughs> You do you can you can still enjoy See work hard. the food is such a passion topic for everyone yeah. like i love fucking you food. had the cookies from subway right <laughs> incredible yeah but good. it's it's the m &M cookies uh, it's good but there's better cookies yeah us. like Subway's yeah, not number one 100 percent. <laughs> yeah yeah no 100 percent. there's the, like you can pay like 20 bucks a cookie at some of these spots now, now this is like we'll get into the next topics after but i want to stay on one more. so <laughs> one more. he just wants to uh, talk yeah, about food, food. <laughs> so pizza best pizza spot in the city well, uh, not based on bar. Uh, don't go based barstool? on barstool. Go based. I did on have North of Brooklyn. It's phenomenal. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie. North of Brooklyn's a pizza spot. And like, there's two locations. The one at Queen, I was was wasn't as good as the other one. I forget where it is, mm -hmm. but yeah. How about you? I only ever eat pizza in Vaughn. Like Locale, I love Artigianale. Like those are probably my two top places for pizza. Pizza Alio is good too, if I'm saying that right. But it's on, it's on Keel Street, across the street from the yeah. community center. It's actually pretty good. How about you? No, pizza, pizza, I kind of just wonderland. No. No. Fucking next topic. Next topic. Next topic. Next topic. It might be nostalgic that I've been there forever, I but the pepperoni on that. You're cut off. It's all frozen. You're joking right now. I had pizza, pizza at 3.30. The smell. It could be just the smell. Matt, just but I, I do enjoy like I always have a Italian pizza on the phone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. But I do enjoy a good pizza. Canadian pizza here and there. Canadian pizza like here and there. Pizza, pizza is basically Canadian. Pizza. Like a like a franchise joint. Brother, you go buy pizza pizza. Nobody's in there every time. I, I don't have it anymore. Just talking about the specific specifically the Canada's Wonderland one. Really? You know I what? I'm not pizza pizza. You're not catch pizza pizza box in my house. Yeah, yeah. It's Pizza Nova. You know, sometimes. Well done though. You got to do it well done. Sometimes a pizza bill because right beside my condo and they they do a pretty good job. Yeah. Fair I had pizza yeah. pizza last night. For Did you? Him. Wow. I, that's my fault. You know what? I got high. And <laughs> as soon as I get high, it's not me. Like, it's, I oh. trust me. I try to go to sleep. It's somebody in me just wakes up, goes on Uber Eats, orders a pizza, and it shows up, and I end up eating it, and then I regret it's it. It's not you. You know, that's the worst, too, especially if you're trying to stay on track with, like, your macros and shit. What I find, and I don't do during the week anymore, I can't. I told you reasons yesterday, other reasons, but... I can't smoke joints at nighttime because I will just squeeze in you get a cookie or some crackers or some cheese. 
or some I you love know cheese, others. Dude. Like I don't have many snacks, but whatever I can, I'll just. But all that shit compounds throughout the week, and then I'm I'm losing ultimately. Yeah, you're behind. So I will not do that anymore, Fuck. and I'll just go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> I can I can smoke and like go to bed hungry. I don't care. I'm gonna good be for no you, man. Chat. No, no I can't either. I gotta eat. My stomach could be like. I'll, it'll be care. pitch black in my condo, care. and I'll just be you like. Don't have to answer, but do you smoke? Here and there, not yeah. like consistently, but like. I, I enjoy once in a while. I prefer, I prefer edibles Edible. or like Ooh. the oils. I don't love smoking just because yeah. my lungs are not the greatest, but I like edibles. So aside from your fitness facility, O2 Fuel and Fitness and Vaughn, shout out O2 Fuel and Fitness and Vaughn, <laughs> uh, you own a spray tan mm -hmm. business. So tell us a little bit about that. What made you get into that? And what is it called? How does it operate? Okay, so it's called Mad and Stefano. I actually yeah. went tanning for the first time last week. Swear to God. Like tanning or spray tanning? Tanning. Like I sat in the bed. It was my first time. I'm Those are really bad for you, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, are they? Can give you yeah. cancer. And you're gonna get old. You're gonna uh, get wrinkly, wrinkly faster. But I just did it one time. Okay, okay you're good then. No more. <laughs> <Pick> no more. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so it's called Lolo Tan, and basically, um, so when I first opened the gym in 2018, um, the year leading up to the gym's grand opening and like the first year that we were in business, I was bartending as well downtown. I used to work at Lavelle. I would bartend there because oh, like Lavelle, I fucking yeah. hate that place. Yeah, me. Too now. Them, oh, trust. Really? Same. Same. Yeah. yeah not, broke, don't uh, go there. The security. Uh, start. Continue. Start. Okay, Wait, I, want, I kind of want to hear what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, I worked there for a little bit. And basically, like, when you first open a business, I mean, I made the decision to not pay myself and hire staff instead um, and just build it up. And then eventually I started paying myself and I quit that job. But even when I did start paying myself, it still wasn't like enough for to make like a solid living. It was just a little bit. And so I still needed to supplement the income that I was making bartending. And I was just basically trying to do whatever I needed to do to make this thing work and to keep my business up and to pay all my personal bills. So I was like, I can't bartend anymore because I was staying up until like five in the morning. I would literally get home at five in the morning and our gym was opening at five in the morning. So I was not sleeping. I was not eating. I wasn't drinking enough water. And I was just like, my health was ruined. So mm -hmm. I was like, no more of this, but I need to supplement it somehow. I came across spray tanning and um, my mom has a history of skin cancer. And so I decided like, I don't want to be tanning in the sun or in the beds or anything anymore. And so um, I decided to start spray tanning and I saw that the profits were really high, very minimal cost. And it, because it was still kind of newer in the beauty world, I was like, I want to get in sooner and be like one of the one of the OGs or someone who can build up the brand before everyone else jumps on board because the awareness of skin cancer and all the health risks when it comes to UV rays were just starting to become a thing and people were starting to realize like tanning beds are not it anymore. And in the beauty world, I know you guys may or may not be able to relate, but in the beauty world, if you think about it, like girls used to only get their nails done for special events. Now every girl gets it done as a part of their regular routine. Right. Girls used to only get their lashes done for a special event. Now girls do it as a part of their regular routine. And I was like spray tanning at the time that I started doing it was very event based. And I was like, right now it's event based, but it's gonna follow along with all those other beauty services where it starts to become a regular part of your routine. And I was like, I wanna get in before that boom happens. Mm, so that's kind of was my thinking. And so that was 2019 that I took my first course. I've taken about like five now. And then I just started like inviting influencers in and that was basically all my marketing was influencers and spreading the word that way. And now I have, there's three of us now, me, um, Jess, who also works at the gym for me. She, I trained, I trained her how to do spray tans and she worked for me this summer. And I have a third girl right now that I'm training. So just a nice. natural born hustler. Right yeah. there. Mm. <laughs> Smart play with the influencers too. Yeah. Yeah. That's like everything these days. I literally built it on that. And like, watching the, the the that boom you know like looking for that that opportunity that window because mm -hmm. i agree i have an yeah. i have a i have a customer that will bring you like more sales than any person in the world they'll be your number one customer <laughs> his name is big Al. <laughs> shout out big Al. does he tan he does tan, he a lot, tan right? so yeah. fucking much he looks like he's just came back from cuba every other day every yeah. time yeah. you know and he does the bad tanning right and i tell him stop bro like he's like literally like jersey shore ronnie that's fucking alex gym tan and laundry <laughs> that's his whole mindset is just working out tanning and whatever 
And I'm like, told him, like, bro, you got to stop doing this, right? Send him my way. 100%. <laughs> He'll be coming there, like, literally every other day. And just like, yeah. <laughs> I'm curious. What is spray tanning? Like, what happens? Like, what's the... I don't, I don't know anything about it. Okay, so everyone thinks that spray tanning... First of all, there's two kinds. There's, like, the one where you go and stand in the booth and it's automatic. I don't do that. If you mm. have ever watched Friends, there's an episode where Ross... Yeah, I remember Like, that. you know that episode? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you don't know what we're talking about, go Google it. But so, it's not that. It's manual. So, it's, like, this airbrush gun attached to an hvlp like it has um and like pushes out air and the solution at the same time and i manually do it so people literally get just naked in front of me and i start tanning them and it's not like a spray paint people think it's like we're painting your skin what's actually happening is the active ingredient called dha in the solution it reacts with the dead skin cells on the top layer of your skin and those dead skin cells will start to get darker so it looks like a tan and then the tan fades when your dead skin cells shut off because obviously your skin sheds every so many days and that's when it fades and then you like do another one after that mm -hmm. so it's like a whole science oh, I love how that. was it like with your first customer and like them having to undress in front of you and you have to spray tan them well you were just like what the fuck honestly on? like them being undressed didn't make me nervous because i was so scared that i was gonna screw it up all i was doing was focusing on like okay don't screw this up especially my first paying client was it was for her wedding and she wow. she didn't know she was my first she's like oh so how long have you been doing this and i totally lied to her because i didn't want her to be nervous but like literally her wedding was a day or two later and i was like Ooh, oh my god this is so much pressure great way to start oh terrifying and usually like with brides so a big part of what i do i'm basically like yes i'm in the beauty industry but i'm also in the bridal industry like the wedding industry is huge like that's where that's the money is and like half of my clients are brides or bridal parties or grooms the maid of honor whatever and so yeah when she came in she's like yeah it's for my wedding and she didn't do a trial tan i usually want my brides to do a trial first like how do you know you're not allergic to the solution or something yeah. and you're just gonna get that's married true. tomorrow yeah so yeah, I wasn't worried about her being naked. I was just like, don't screw her up. Don't make her look orange. And then we're good. And so you taught yourself, essentially. Pretty much, yeah. Like you can take all these courses and stuff, but it's the hands-on repetition, yeah. just like anything else, that really makes you good. Mm. It's so funny because like, when I did the driveway ceiling business, yeah, same thing, like we would go to people's houses and then they would be like, how long have you been doing this for? I'm like, oh yeah, years, years, you know, it's family business, et cetera. And Fake like, it till you make it. It was like literally like our first month into the business. and you'd have to be so careful because like if you can't get that sealant on people's interlocking so like you'd be like fuck like anything else you're just worrying about like hitting the exact line properly or whatever it may be and it's like the whole time that pressure's in your head right mm -hmm. so i can see that when you're spray tanning someone before their wedding you can't fuck that up right? no you just got to be confident and like make them feel confident in you even though in your head you're shitting your pants but like don't let them see it and that's like literally my life motto with with everything so yeah you gotta no. just you gotta just buy in you gotta just go for it you just gotta dive right in i'm a big like risk taker like that like i just jump into things that's the only way that you where learn do you, where do you deep feel in. like you get that from i would say partially from my dad partially from just like playing sports and stuff and also to be honest like so i've always been like that even as a kid but i think even more so as an adult it's been extra emphasized these last few years because like so i went through something like super traumatic that made me realize like how short life is and now like i literally have no fears of nothing because i i realize that and have a different perspective mm -hmm. so whenever i think of an idea or want to take a risk or something yes i weigh my risks and i try to be as smart as possible like risk versus reward but at the end of the day once i make a decision that i want to do something i just dive in and i'm like so it sounds so cheesy but you only live once like i don't know what's guaranteed tomorrow like i want to make the most out of my life no matter what and so that's i would say where it comes from you're, you're giving me like deja vu vibes like we had this conversation before where we talk about it. Like anyone that has experienced a near death experience in life there's two ways they can go about it they can go about it in like a negative aspect of it and just like be trying to victim be a victim and it just eats them alive or they live that life where it's like they have to do it they have to like, every opportunity they got to take they got to try it they don't listen to anybody they don't care what anybody's opinion ma nobody's opinion matters it's That's their funny. way or the highway <laughs> and you learn from your mistakes you do stuff and some stuff works out but it's like it's that's like the way to be successful you have to try a million things mm -hmm. right if you don't try something you're never gonna find out what could have possibly happened yeah. right mm -hmm. so many people live life like that because they're like, oh, they play that safe route, etc. When you've been through a crazy experience, you're just like, fuck, I can die tomorrow, I can die tomorrow, I can die tomorrow. I was gonna die, I can die, you know? And it's like, now you're just living life on the edge and like, when you start to do all this stuff, 
you see the success of it, right? Mm -hmm. Stuff starts to work out. That risk that you thought wasn't gonna, that people thought was gonna be stupid, ends up being the best decision of your life. You start to see your life elevate, right? So that's amazing. Yeah, even perspective. If, even if you fail at something, like yes, when you take a big risk, because for me, like I, ever since that happened, and when I was younger, I was always kind of like that, anyways. But like I just sprint full speed ahead, like pedal to the metal. And yes, some people might say like, oh, that's a little bit like crazy. It's a little bit risky. But at the end of the day, yes, I could possibly fail at something. But also, if that failure happens, I mean, I've had failures before, and it's it, it can always be worse. And then you, it's just about how you move forward after that failure. It's not like you have to just sit in it and sink in it. It's like you can move forward after that and make moves after that. It's not the end of the world. It can always be worse. Yeah, but you also learn something too from that, right? There's a hunt, then that's the value in the fail and the loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you just, uh, failures are great. You dissect them, you see like where you went wrong, you 100%. analyze it. It's like, how can I do better next time? Yeah. Like, they're awesome. They're good, the best teachers. That's yeah. what it is. If yeah. that's the worst thing that happens, if I take a risk and I fail at it, and the worst case scenario is I learned a lesson that I can take forward, that's still not really a failure. How important do you think fitness is or should be pushed more for like the younger generation? I think it's extremely like important. I mean, not just because of the physical physical aspect. I mean, that part's like obvious, yeah. but in terms of like, I'd say my confidence in all aspects of my life, it starts there. Like if I go a week without training, I feel it in my confidence. I feel it in my decision making. Right. I feel it in like how I speak to people. Even like, for example, this morning, I mean, sometimes on Saturdays I'll take like a rest day, but I knew that I was coming here today. I was like, I have to be on point. I have to know what I'm talking about. You worked out so I worked out this morning, literally just because I knew my brain would be more sharp and like my confidence would come through more versus like late around all morning and then just coming here that was me, that was me <laughs> I, admit that. I told myself i'm like i'm gonna work out at 11 a.m then 11 10 hits i'm like you know what i think i should take a day off well we have to set up the yeah, pod so and now like i feel like shit today i'm like you know what once you work out like your body just feels so energetic yeah you just your brain yeah. feels different like that's why with kids in the younger generation i mean I have two little cousins and they're like my little sisters. I used to train them when I lived back in my hometown. And I mean, it wasn't just for the physical. It was like, I wanna instill in them what hard work is, what discipline is, what it means to take care of yourself. All those things are life skills. And I mean, no matter what you wanna do with your life, you need to be able to have confidence in doing whatever it is you're gonna do. So I have a very important question, okay? okay. This is for the guys and like, we struggle with this every single day. When a girl's at a gym and she's working out, <laughs> no, how no. or if you should approach a woman or not? Because there's many people that say yes, and many people, girls that say no. It's a good many question. girls that say, like, oh, if the girl w looks at you once or twice and you have that conversation, etc. Tell us what the fuck this. <laughs> what's the? Did you ask this on another episode? We recently? did. We did. No, we asked this. We talked about this like two, three times. Yeah, yeah because it's such a like you know what it is. So many times, like guys will just be like, "Yo, I see this girl. I don't want to talk At the gym to her. all the time. She's just a like, girl. Or it's what like, if that's like your future wife that you just missed an opportunity? <clears throat> you know? like, okay, you I'm gonna like, tell yeah, you. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you like both sides. I guess I'm gonna say 95 percent of the time, don't do it like the scenario 95% of the time is no we don't want it but that like 5% of the time you need to know if she has a hood on don't talk to her a hat don't talk to her headphones especially over the ear don't talk to her if she's like looking down and not making eye contact don't talk to her if she like looks up at you and gives you the eye contact then like that's probably your go ahead but then how do you approach her right do you like that, that's what we want to know as well. say like hey, nice weights Right there's like, a spot. Like, so there's one way is like, okay, the girl does does not look interested. She's in her own little zone. Do not disrupt that. Let her work out. That's perfect. Don't come in and be like, hey, excuse me. But if that if you make that eye contact, etc., you want to have that conversation. Wait, what's the best way? I got an idea. <laughs> Let's all three us guys give our perspective. How what would we do if you, you start? Saw, you start, you start, start. Yeah, but brother, I give you the yeah, answer. You brother. Brother. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll start. Okay, I would go indirect. Maybe make a comment about something maybe i like her shoes or something maybe see something like that or maybe she's doing a certain exercise or something and maybe i compliment that exercise or like maybe i talk about something not like i'm not going to go up to her and say hey i just wanted to come up to you and talk to you and say you're a very big good looking girl and this one time <laughs> you know what i mean so that's my answer what do you got? i just wouldn't do it you just wouldn't I, do i've it? never in my life unless it's like my buddy introduces me to like a girl and we're talking whatever then try to carry a conversation from there. But I'll leave it at the gym, right? It'll be a separate story. Like if I see that person outside, 
like at a restaurant or a club yeah, yes. or like a party whatever then i'll go up to the club, etc that's like the best way but at a gym I it's just, hard I'll, when they're I'll working out do it because i just don't know what the fuck to say like <laughs> yeah. i'm not gonna like maybe say oh like help tell her about a technique but maybe i'm fucking doing the technique no wrong. that's like the that, worst, that's the worst right? okay last thing mm. you ever do don't is like try to girl. correct yeah. her form yeah. like that's that's like a hard no how many times does guys just try to do that like, like i go to regular gyms yeah. too sometimes because like i love my gym but i need to go where people don't know me yeah. sometimes to have that time to myself mm. and like i was at a good life recently and oh, I was, worse, oh my gosh yeah this guy came up to me and he was saying like oh you know i think i was doing a chest press he's like but if you do it this way you'll hit like this muscle and i was like i I own a gym. I'm a trainer myself. I'm, and I looked at him. No offense to the guy, but I'm like, you don't even look like you do this exercise. So yeah, <laughs> what are you yeah. trying to tell me? So that to me is like a hard no. But I will say, of the times that it's happened, the one that was like the closest to being successful was a guy who complimented my shoes and my socks. So uh, you were won. close. Matt, what, about yeah. you? what about you? What's funny? Matt, asked him what color their fucking cat is. <laughs> <laughs> See, that yeah. would get me though. Yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> Matt, you uh, look like a cat. No, so, well, a lot of my, a lot of my relationships like work business i've come from the gym like a lot of my networking happens yeah. in the oh, gym nice nice so i'm kind of used to it and i've You're a dated right? like i met a, an ex at the gym dated her but for me it's just natural it's like you say what up then over time the what up turns to like a small talk and then over That's time the too. small talk turns up to planting the a seeds. little bit more and then like you said you see them outside the gym and it's, it's just more natural organic i would never just approach and like you know Going it on. has to be like for me personally it has to be just natural organic you know what the thing is is they got earphones on and stuff too so it's you're, it's i agree it is it isn't it is a difficult like approach you know what my boy does so. and I'm, I'm also so i'm also the type i'm also in the zone yeah exactly so i don't really want to be I'm sweating bro bothered. Eh? yeah when i'm at the gym like yeah and i can't like like, like the leaking. song if, if i if you're especially if it's like the part where i'm going to lift at and you want to talk to me doing that part you can't yeah you know two things go cool. the new airpod uh max like the over the head headphones are fucking amazing wait i never saw them. them oh i never heard about never this. saw them yeah you definitely, new, right? you definitely saw yeah them. they're like the big ones the big ones yeah they're actually incredible like i love them you fucking know them all yeah you probably have a pair too yeah yeah you have a pair in my bag yeah. show How us right now can we, should, oh. no, I wasn't, I the other one. dean are they are they like headphones like this yeah they look no, like no, those no, a little bit not this no, I know. They're I know. Like they this, look like yours. Yeah. Like I can't these. work out with AirPods because they fall out of they my ears. I, have, I use Bose. Best. Bose earbuds. Yeah, no. me too. Try, try I these. can like literally try like these. shake and they'll never come out of my ears. I'm glad you said that because I need new headphones and I want over the ear ones because like don't talk yeah. to me at the gym. That's And I noticed when I put them over the head, socks and shoes. To me. I do not like when people talk to me at the gym. Like, it was, I'm in my own little bubble. I'm thinking about shit. Like, you know, who's fucking around? Yeah, if a rocket came up to you and said something. Then I'm fucking tossing them across the room, right? But like, I'm just saying like, they help a lot like it's very good but fuck um what was the other question the other question so one of my boys what he does to pick up women at the gym so are you talking about big al, big al. <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry big al. i love you bro i love you you're the best you're a fucking beauty he's a fucking legend um you'll post the stories consistently at that place and you'll tag the gym then it'll just you you will know like, if there's a girl that's interested in you well like watch creep your stories and from there, like she's creeping your stories. You can hit her with the follow. And Done. Yeah, stuff. yeah. You That's find her. That's a lot of work. Well, he big Al's committed. Very big Al's committed. <laughs> it's big like Al. a marketing strategy. Oh, He's marketing Al. himself. Big Al is, is a legendary man. <laughs> Drop that location. You also can see like, because sometimes you, like I've seen a cute girl at a gym and stuff. I look through the tag photos, see if she's there. But but it's so funny because like then it's so right. Like do not approach a girl at a gym, right? No. And it's like that conversation like some guys will be like yeah and you all see it at the gym too like guys will go up to a girl and try to talk to her and the girl just like like what the fuck are you doing this is a good debate you know? we should clip this and then post this and then we'll get the reviews from people i think that so has there ever been a successful attempt she just said uh, no right? successful no fuck. no and i think like okay this is what i think would probably work the best at least in my opinion for me anyways well one like I said, don't try to correct me or mm. anything like that at the gym. But if you come up to me and you tell me like that what I'm doing was impressive or like like feed the ego a little bit or like you're a beast or like good for you, like lifting you're that weight, you're squatting it, yeah. that weight or whatever, or like your form is like perfect, something like that, or mm. like the shoes. Like I'm a big shoe person, so maybe that guy just got lucky because like that's my sweet spot. And like if you compliment my, my shoes, I'll love you forever. So like 
but you also have to read body language that's a thing it's like i find some guys are not good at reading body language because it's like a communication thing but like girls will tell you with their body language like if they find you attractive at the gym and they're single like you'll know even if you just like you're not bothering them but you catch their eye and like you smile at them or something you'll know based on like how she smiles back or if she like turns away right away and by what she's wearing but body language is huge like when i go into the gym like i'm i don't want to be approached me personally and what i do is like i literally don't make eye contact with anyone even if you're standing right in front of me and i have to walk by you and you're looking at me i will literally look past you and like if a girl's doing that it's it's a hard no exactly yeah yeah it's tough yeah. it's tricky yeah, it's like tricky. but also like if you want to shoot your shot like if if you shoot your shot and it doesn't go well like okay what's the worst thing that happens mm. is she rejects you so like i mean if that's if you're really gyms. interested or you switch strips because you're yeah now your ego Shot is all my shots, not working. Okay, next. <laughs> i mean like we don't love it but like if it's someone that you're really really interested in and maybe you see them there all the time and like you truly are like okay i really want this girl okay like go for it it's just like when it happens all the time it starts to get annoying. yeah exactly <laughs> it can't be that one guy that's not even working out he's just trying to like pick up girls yeah like that's my therapy time like i'm literally 100%. there for free therapy yeah you're there to the grind you're there are, there are guys like that though yeah 100 percent. i feel like a gym is one place like you don't do that and you just avoid gym relationships because every time like people break up in gyms it's like then they're leaving the gyms and then this and that it's like that's yep. my gym but you can't mm -hmm. you make a reality show been there twice on gyms i'm telling you that would be the great oh the yeah shit that happens at gyms is just so entertaining you can sit back it's like a movie right there's the characters especially at lifetime, you see especially the at lifetime. there's fuck, the characters well, by the way fuck you lifetime someone stole my wallet from there Oh yeah, but wait. Oh, yeah, I, actually, recent. I didn't. I didn't ask about this. Was it in the the cover? So, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what happened. I'll give you the story. Okay, this is a nice Monday. I woke up. I was all energetic. You know, it's a good day. You know, I was happy. Got my banking out of the way, and I had like three to four grand in my wallet. That's which, a, that's a lot to bring to the gym, so. Yeah, but it's just in my wallet. I carry that because bro, shit happens. I gotta go buy something. Work expense, work or whatever it may be. Like I, I need to always carry cash with me, right? So. I've always been doing it since I go to like every single fucking day. So I don't know what happened this time. So I lost my trust in humanity, by the way. So uh, I took my wallet, went to the change room. I put it inside. I locked the locker. I locked it. So I went, did my whole workout. So I put the wallet like separate from everything else, like behind my shoes. So I came back down. I got my stuff. I didn't like shower at the gym. So I just put on my hoodie, everything. I know that's nasty. I'm sorry. Uh, I put on everything. Um, got everything but i don't remember grabbing my wallet right so i don't recall if the wallet was there or not or whatever i just thought my wallet must have been in my jacket or, or whatever so then i walked out of the change room i got everything i put my stuff on and i just grabbed my bag and i left now it got to the cafeteria 30 second walk to the cafeteria in 30 seconds i was like i don't have my wallet so i walked back my wallet's gone so now you I'm looking around. Locker. I'm looking around. But 30 seconds, someone stole it either from the locker in 30 seconds or someone looked at my passcode and I was doing it, took the wallet. Or someone, like a staff member went in and someone took the, uh, the wallet, right? So I asked around. And that 30 seconds, everyone, there's nobody else that came in the gym. So I'm like, guys, anybody fucking see a wallet? Everyone's like, no, no wallet, nothing, whatever. So cool, whatever. I'm like pissed off. I leave the gym. I go and then I get a call from the gym. We found your wallet in the locker. I was no. Like, cool. So I come back, they give me the wallet, there's no money in it, right? So then I'm like, who brought you the wallet? They're like some guy came in, he just started his workout, and he came into the locker room and then found the wallet, right? So now my theory is, A, a worker seen it drop, took the wallet, took the money out, threw the wallet in another locker, or someone was lurking around, took the wallet, took the money out, took the wallet out, gave it to his buddy, buddy came back, and there's so many variables, yeah. right? Yeah, that's probably, just that's probably it. That's probably pissed me the fuck what, off. What happened? And I was so upset, and I was just like, it's just people are just like you like someone made the comment too it's like don't go to a lifetime if you have to steal you're paying like 200 dollars for a membership yeah why are you gonna be there and steal and it's just like you just lose your faith in human like people right and it's like come on did wow. they take your cards and stuff or just the cash no, just the cash well that's the, honestly that's good though because when people take the like cards. the cards it's such a nightmare running around trying to figure all that and out I can't, but the thing is i canceled two cards right before they called me so i was like <sighs> Not oh, really. like, it's just a, it was a headache because yeah. now like I have yeah, pre-authorized payments for those cards, so now I gotta re go back yeah, and enter yeah, yeah. the new cards, all that stuff. So I'm just like, people are just like, you find something and someone dropped a wallet, pick it up, return it to the respectful. Person. I've done that with That's phones it. two times. Yeah, it's I a, found the phone on the floor and returned it. One of the times the guy was at the, it was like the Italy game was playing. The guy was drunk as fuck and he left his uh, wallet on the table. I gave it to the bartender. He came back after, he found it. 
And then she's like, oh, yeah, this guy gave it gave it to me. And he's like, oh, wow, man, thank you so much. He bought me a beer and shit. We drank a beer together. Like, you do another. good and do yeah, good, good will come to you, right? Good karma. You need yeah, good karma. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I've done a lot of stupid shit, but I don't steal, brother. I don't yeah. do that. No, it's fine. No. Fine. I've done stupid shit. It's next level. So Never done that. Tell us what's next. What's, next. what's going on? What do you have coming up? What's Any new next? locations? So, um, originally the plan was to open more locations. And then COVID gave me a reality check that I, that's not what mm. I want. Um, which like everything happens for a reason. I think that was the yep, lesson agreed. there. So uh, my next thing is I would eventually like to sell the gym. I don't know if I would sell like the whole my whole portion or just majority of it, so I can be a little bit more hands off. Because um, I mean, what I learned was I need a combination of like my old life when I was in the DR, living like a chill life on the beach and whatever. But then also I came here and I did like the hustle, I did the grind and everything. And I love both, but I can't do one extreme or the other for too long. I need a balance of the two. So I do eventually want to sell um, the gym and then move on to like my next venture. Um, and I would like to do maybe a little bit of like business coaching and stuff for like younger entrepreneurs that kind of were where I was yeah. before and give them the guidance that I wish I had. Um, and I really want to start a podcast too. Oh, nice. nice. <laughs> I think that's, that's the best thing. You should do those retreats. Yeah, I, that's yeah. another thing that, that I was Coaching about. retreats will work in that's tandem. Like, Another thing, too, is combining my experience from when I was in the DR doing those fitness retreats and then the business knowledge I have now from owning the gym and, like, tanning business. I've learned so much, and now I can combine those and, and do those sorts of things. So one of my goals was um, by the time I'm 30, like, I don't want to be here in the winter anymore. Like, I want to always be gone, and I've always wanted to live abroad at least, like, half the year. So I think that's kind of where I'm headed now in the next couple of years is doing those kinds of retreats um, and also business coaching, fitness retreats, those those kinds of things and not being tied down to like a physical location is really important to me mm, love that yeah amazing love it keep it up man. it's actually like that's sort of the reason like i reached out to you and i wanted to bring you on as well as like, i seen your hustle and i'm like you know what it's fun to see young people doing like, like opening their business and doing something outside of like the matrix that we call it right so it's uh you know keep that up and it's like it's also for like the the women as well uh, there's so much opportunity right mm -hmm. you got to just jump into a business and you you can always bring passion something that you love and turn it into a business which is what you did you love fitness you love training and you were able to turn that into a money-making business right mm -hmm. now hopefully the next thing you do is amazing and uh, if you do those retreats we definitely got to go to those mm -hmm. those, are, those are gonna be sick yeah no yeah. i definitely plan on doing those like that's that's kind of where i'm heading now i mean i the gym i checked that off my list i always said i wanted to own mm. a gym and have it up and running by 25 i was 24 when that happened mm. i'm 28 now and i'm like okay i'm only a year and a half away from my next goal when i'm 30 to not like live here yeah. anymore so i only have a year and a half to make that happen so that's that's like the next pressure thing. is good yeah. pressure is always good a lot, a lot can happen in a year now yeah, yeah. so uh, <laughs> Where can people find you? So you have O2 Fuel and Fitness. I'll let you say it. <laughs> um, so our, my personal Instagram is Janessa, like Vanessa with a J, Loriano, which I guess, I don't know, yeah. do you put that in yeah, the thing? It's very long. Her, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, and then in my bio, you can find both both of my businesses. O2 Fuel Vaughn, we're located in Woodbridge, right behind the Tesla dealership. And then Lolo Tan Toronto is my Instagram for my other business. And that's literally down the road from my gym. But both are in my bio. Perfect. I love it. And your new customer is going to be Big Al. Shut up, Big Al. <laughs> Shut up, Big Al. <laughs> Come on in, Big Al. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, coming in today, it's been you know a very insightful conversation. We learned a lot about the fitness, and we learned what's the best burger spot in Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> so pleasure. Thank you, uh, everyone. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. And this episode is brought to you by Higher Sweat Mercados Group, <laughs> Matt Real. What's your company called? What? Your real estate company. Your Matthew person. Campoli. Real estate. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> It's brought to you by Price to Sell. Price to Sell, Matthew Campoli. Yeah, Matthew that. Campoli, you're a professional corporation. Yeah. Like, What's your business number? Uh, not, not sure off the top of my head. <laughs> What's your account number? <laughs> I'm on my sin. Yeah. Pin number. Yeah. Pin number. Thank you. <laughs> we'll ship on my card right here, my credit card. <laughs> Well, thank you guys. Peace out. Ciao. Salud.